Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Let's do another uh, video. Patreon.com slash Rio Macro and Pure MMT for the 100%. Okay. So let's talk about what uh, Stephanie, in the, in the face of inflation, 4.2% inflation. And she's like, oh, no, it's okay. Inflation is the constraint. Yes, it's the inflation. Really? Yeah, inflation is the constraints. Uh, inflation is a constraint. Whoa, wow. Oh, that's kind of cool. The phony revenue constraint. Yeah, it's phony. Yeah, you can just print to whatever you want. Inflation is, okay, is it inflation? All right, well, 4.2. Now what? <laughs> now what you going to do? Deny it, of course. She's going to pull a Trump bot. Just deny what the evidence say. All right, just make, for, just keep beating the same drum. Make pretend it's not there. No, no, it's okay. It's, it's wonderful. 4.2 is good. Now, uh, having said that, uh, it is a little bit skewed because we are comparing uh, to last year. And it's really not fair. And I said the same thing about GDP growth. Oh, they all came out. Oh, 6% six, uh, six GDP growth. And it's going to be double digits in the summer. And you don't understand. It's wonderful. Uh, no. <laughs> Take it easy. Take it easy there, Manny. Relax. Uh, no, because you're comparing a lockdown to today, which is much, much better today. We don't have a lockdown. And you're saying, no, oh, look, there's inflation. Well, <laughs> not really. Uh, in that sense, in, in I'm talking about the year-over-year -year number. Same thing with GDP, right? So uh, when the inflation number comes out and it's 4.2, which is very high, Yellen comes out, ah, oh, it's technical. Ah, it's technical now. Ah. ah, okay. So the GDP was not technical? She didn't say that for GDP. You see? Disingenuous. Disingenuous. Now, even though I, I tell you that, you look at the PMI number today, it's extremely high. Way, way above any kind of lockdowns to today and so forth. All right, so that's not good. All right, but we'll skip that too. Well, you know, we'll take it into consideration, but we'll skip that too. What matters? Well, what matters is that companies are raising prices. Smuckers, Coca-Cola, Kimberly Clark, Warren Buffett came out and says, look, you know, we raise prices because of inflation. That's not going away. That is not going to go away. Doesn't forget about the number, the 4.2. Okay, those increases are not going to go away. So when you're running around saying, "Well, inflation is the constraint," and you're seeing inflation, you're seeing high uh, unemployment, and you're talking nonsense. You're pretending it's not there. Look at the jobs. They were expecting one million jobs created. Oh, we got to open up. Oh yeah. Ooh, uh. You know what they did with this one, which was gross. They not even close. They started bl blaming children. Ah, yes, yeah, because the children aren't in school. That's why there's high in, uh, uh, such a low number in, uh, in employment. Ah, now it's the children. Okay, so what are they doing this summer? The mothers. Well, I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> what are they doing this summer? Quit their jobs and then come back in September? kind of nonsense is that? You cannot listen to cute stories. Okay? I don't care if it's MMT. I don't care if it's uh, coming from politics. I don't care if it's coming from some apologist. Forget about it. Okay? You can't listen to these people. Now, we've printed in a little over a year close to $6 trillion. Okay? Five, whatever. Okay? Where's all the jobs? Where's all our savings? That they promised us that oh well we just have a cash famine, we just don't deficit spend enough. Where is that? Thirty percent, over thirty percent of households today, are being funded by government. Think about that. <laughs> Their wages are being funded by government. And don't make a mistake thinking that oh well, you know we pumped all this money into the economy and that's why there's inflation. Uh uh, that's not the way it works. That's not why. The only reason you have inflation 
is because there was so much money in the savings bubble that it started to shift from stocks, bonds, real estate. It started to overflow into commodities. Here it is. Commodities. Commodities have skyrocketed. Now, I'll be honest, I was not in the inflation camp so long as we were within this channel. Now, the rate of growth is a little bit disturbing, right? That it was extremely, extremely fast. And that is problematic. Uh, but beyond that point, so long as we remain below this channel here, below this resistance area, and it started to kind of weather away, all right, we're not going to have inflation. But now it's broken out. That's a problem. Why? Because this can really run. And if this is any indication, ooh, we in trouble. Now, to my subscribers, prior to all this uh, COVID stuff and way before that, 2019, I said, be careful of commodities. Keep an eye on commodities. Commodities are going to start rising uh, as deficits increase. Because remember, going into COVID, uh, and I went bearish uh, September, October, Going into COVID, we had 4% deficits. Uh, so we went from 2% in, I think, 2017, and then with tax cuts and, you know, printing for the people and all that nonsense, we went to 4% of GDP deficits. Went into a recession in February prior to COVID. A lot of people don't know that. We entered a recession in February. Prior to COVID, just repeating it <laughs> in case you didn't hear it right the first time. And then stimulus for the people came, MMT everything, we're going to be rich. Okay, so we printed, like I said, almost $6, six trillion since. And where's all the economic growth? Where's all our savings? Now you're getting commodity price inflation. Now what? You're going to cut deficits, <laughs> you're going to impose austerity, you're going to throw everybody on uh, extended unemployment out in the street, forget about the Green New Deal, what are you going to do now? You see, as I told you many, many, many times before, that shit is only to debunk, not debunk, counter criticism from MMT, that's all it was, it's not realistic. They, they were just saying that, well, what argument do I have now? Oh, oh, they were going to print that there's no limit. No, okay, uh, inflation is the limit. Ah, I won the argument. Oh, okay, so they do have limits. Ah, yeah, this is good. Well, here it is. Here we are. High unemployment, high inflation, companies raising prices, right? Oil, uh, oil is up. Gas is up. So... What are you going to do now, Miss Stephanie Kelton and Mr. Warren Mosler? You got no plan. I told you that a long time ago. You got no plan. You don't. You just say words. Just like all this money printing was supposed to make us rich. Stuff us with savings. And, oh, Nick, mm, you're not an economist, Nick. Mm, mm, you're not an economist, Nick. Mm. I'm not an economist. Okay. <laughs> All right, I told you so. <laughs> that's, a, that's an economist in my book, my friend. Uh, because I told you that you're not going to get savings for the people, for the 95%. You're going to get asset price inflation. Why? Because there's a saving bubbles that is create a savings bubble that is created by excessive deficits. Right? And where are stocks today? All time highs. Real estate, all time highs. Uh, bonds. Eh, they sold off a little bit now. Oh, that's another thing. You see what the, the ten year is doing? Oh no, the the Fed controls the interest rates. Really? Okay, do you see what's going on here with, take this off. Do you see what interest rates are trying to do here? They're rising, trying to correct. The free market is trying to correct the commodity boom. 
Okay, despite despite all the efforts with QE and ZERP and all this nonsense uh, going against them, they're trying to raise interest rates to tame inflation. Okay. But people don't like, they don't like auto, sta auto, auto, auto stabilizers from the free market. They don't like that stuff. You know, they want everything to be centralized, you know, and planned. And, oh, yeah, we, we're printing for the people because printing grows the economy. It's stimulus for the economy. We're going to grow the economy from the bottom up. We're going to do, and what has it done? Nothing. Nothing. Zip. Zilch. Goose eggs. Nothing. They only make you think that they're doing something just because they're printing worthless digits and passing it out like candy. It's, oh, but it's a V-shaped recovery. What V-shaped recovery? We're 14 months into this. 14 months. You're measuring from a lockdown and cherry picking and saying, oh, look, well, it's better than a lockdown. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we still have mass unemployment. We still have uh, a lot of problems. The growth in the economy is nonsense. We're still in a recession, actually depression, right? Uh, neighbors hasn't changed it, that we're, that we're out of a depression. So we're still, <laughs> look at the Fred numbers. You see this little yellow area right here? It hasn't ended. Here's the gray ones back here when the recession ended. We're still in it. We're still in it. And everybody's celebrating and cheering and clapping and woohoo. Oh, but Nick is negative. Oh, I'm negative. <laughs> Have you seen the labor force participation? It's a disaster. I'm negative. I'm, I'm just telling you what reality is. I got nothing to do with this data. Nothing. Zil. Zero. Look at the jobs number. 266 out of the estimated 1 million. Look at advanced economies, uh, uh, U.S. trade uh, has declined relative to other advanced economies. We're right here on the bottom. We're printing for the people. Trades and goods and services as per cent of GDP. We are so anemic, it's not even funny. Not even funny. Japan is kicking the shit out of us. I mean, Christ. Oh, no, sorry. That's, uh, uh, that's the world. Japan is doing better than us. That, that's so embarrassing. That, that's so embarrassing. Jeez. And just to get back to that labor force participation, we should be booming right now. We should be booming because millennials are bigger than boomers and they're in prime age labor force. Okay? They're booming. We should be booming. Not even close. So you got the demographics to do it. Supposedly, we got all the deficits that we required, right? The six trillion, a little over a year. That's supposed to, supposed to make everything great, right? We, you got that, that you wanted. We got the lockdowns removed, vaccines, all that good stuff. Uh, you got that too, okay? And where's, <laughs> why are we still in recession? Why am I the, the negative one and you are the positive one? Because you see things so rosy and beautiful when we should be flying, flying right now. If anything that you believed about deficits was true, anything remotely true. Uh -uh. In fact, in fact, what you see is the labor force participation has been falling since... 2000. Deficits, on the other hand, keep increasing, worse and worse and worse, and this is not even all of it. It gets much worse. It's somewhere down here now. Somewhere down there. And you're telling me MMT uh, economy for the people and give everybody money and a V-shaped recovery. Look how wonderful things are. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> are you blind? <laughs> Uh, and then you pretend like, oh, yes, I know about economics. Yes, sure you do. I can see. <laughs> we have a cash famine. We have a cash famine. If we don't have a cash famine, everybody happy. Yes, everybody rich. 
Right? How, how, how ridiculous. How ridiculous are these people? None, nothing they say comes true. Nothing. And when I mean nothing, I mean nothing. You know why? Because they cannot predict or forecast an economy. They stay far, far away from that. You know what they're focused on? Telling you that you can get free stuff. Telling you that, look at this book. I'm going to sign it for you. We're, we're in the book signing business now, and we're promoting books so they can get rich with nonsense, that we're going to give you free money. That's all that they're good for. Did they predict COVID coming when uh, in its infancy stage to say, hey, look, you know, we're in, we're in trouble? No. Are they saying anything? Did, did they see inflation coming? No. Are they saying now, hey, you know, we got to be careful with uh, inflation so high? No. <laughs> uh, what, what were they doing, in fact? In fact, they were telling you when we had 3.4% unemployment that we needed a job guarantee. Oh, yeah, wonderful. <laughs> At 3.4% unemployment, we needed a job guarantee. <laughs> this is how delusional these people and people take them serious. Why? Because they want to believe the bullshit they say that they can make them rich. So now you got $6 trillion. Where's your savings? Do you own the bonds? Do you own government bonds? Because if you don't, then you don't own the savings. Whoever owns the government bonds owns is the beneficiary of all deficits. And it ain't you. <laughs> it's not even close to you. But stocks are at all-time high. Bonds are at all-time high. Home prices all time high, and now commodities are booming. You know, and if we continue on this path and we don't we don't change anything, guess what? Commodities are going to be at all time highs. Cryptos are all time highs. So who benefits from from deficits? You, really? Do you? How are we going to pay for it? It's going to be you. You are the one who's going to pay for it through inflation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. So how are we going to pay for it? You're going to pay for it. That's how we're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it through inflation. And you've been cheering for that. You've been, Woo! more deficits. No problem. Yes, give me more deficits. And now that you have to pay for it, you're going to realize it. In the early stages now, you're still going to kind of go along with it until your uh, grocery bills start to rise. Whatever you're buying starts to rise, and you start seeing your wages are not covering it, and you have to cut back on spending, then you're going to realize what MMT is all about. Not you. <laughs> not you at all. It's all for the top 5% who are the beneficiary of all deficits. Not you. All right, that's it. Take care, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.